Can you all hear? Me? Yo. Can everyone hear me? I can hear you. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move so I don't have these gay fish behind me. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna move too, so I'm not like kind of creeping in the dark. Hang on a second. My Airbnb oh. has this like, fish. This fish clock. I get to make my. My nice Tyler video with the fish clock. <laughs> it, adds, it adds ambience to the Tyler video. Dude, fucking <laughs> it took us half an hour to get this shit going. Jesus Christ. We should do a we should do a Facebook live with our with our erect boners out. We should do a Facebook live on how much Facebook live sucks. Because all the, all these guys private message us and they're like, "Hey man, send us your sex videos." Fuck. All right, there we go. I usually so get just... like more, more like the indirect creeping, like, yo, bro, what are you up to? Uh, chilling, how can I help? <laughs> like, uh, you know, not much, man, like, what's going on with you? Dude, I don't fucking know you, like, just get to the fucking point. <laughs> All right, oh, fuck, now I can't see the questions. Are you near your, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, near I, your computer? Yeah, I, I can see the questions. All right, so let's, right, uh, yeah. oh, this, this thing is, like, mad weird. I have to hold it, like, a weird way. All right, so. Dude, my hair is so long, I need, I need to get hair. It's getting, like, it's starting to, like, curl like i normally spike it up and it's starting to like curl down in the front by the by yeah, the way you're, uh, you're, you're, board, you're as bordering as a, on tyler here right now so huh? <laughs> you're bordering uh, by the tyler. way i want i want to like state something i like it's cool because i'm putting out content every day now so it's like this this little like saga or whatever people are probably like watching or i hope they are watching shit like day by day like following along with my life and all this I got so much hate for that video I just put up with that girl at the bar. Like, they're like, oh, that's a four, that's a three. I sent you the naked video of that girl. She has, like, a ten body. Can you confirm she is, that? She is, she is, she is very attractive. Like, her body, like, yeah, her face is, like, so, so. It doesn't so... matter. You, you can bang. Here's the thing with the internet. You can bang a perfect ten. Like, a girl that people say is, everyone agrees is a perfect ten. And then as soon as you bang her, people are going to be like, ah, dude, she was, like, a 7.5 at best. That's that's like the way. Just there's like no getting around that. No, no, but like yeah, yeah like her face was like slightly mannish, which is like common for like Latina, like um, Portuguese. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even think it was mannish. I mean, I think she's she's fucking. No, I mean, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Her teeth were like a little. She had like a couple gaps in her teeth. But here's the thing: she has a flat stomach. <laughs> she, she has a flat stomach. She has a flat you're stomach. She has like perfect big tits, which I love. And it has like a juicy booty. I, 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 would bang, I would bang her case closed. It's simple as I that. I banged her like all night and day. And I got all these guys being like, hey, why are you making a video with a three? Or it's like, shut the fuck up. And it sucks because I can't post this stuff. What, what is it? Can we put stuff on RedTube or something? Or on, on uh, Tumblr? Or... <laughs> like, because the eyes are always like, oh, you just took a picture with her. Or you just took a video with her. I'm like, dude, I'll, I'll show you. I just don't want guys to like see my cock because it's fucking weird, but. <laughs> I think right, maybe the or, I think the people who are hating on the pick are the people who want to bait you into sending like the nudes. So they're like they're trying to like fucking like bring you bring your ass down like so you just like feel down now like all right fine here's the sex of it and then they just got got what they wanted. It's like yeah, it's, it's, just, dumb. it's, it's, just, that it's just it's just dumb. Like her body is like a ten. You can't tell in the video. And I got yeah, all these yeah. people hating like oh like make this video with an attractive chick. It's like fuck you. All right. Anyways, let's, 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 let's move on. Let's move on from this fucking. Uh, let's yeah. move on from this fucking chick. I got the questions open. Uh, so All right. we'll jump in. Would you wanna? Uh, should we? Should we like preface this about like our like little adventures in LA? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, where where do you want? I, 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 I was like, a, I, I'll, I'll just say. I, I came to visit Alex, and well, for, okay. So for I, I, I can hear you. We're gonna have to edit. Yeah, I'll edit this. Yeah, I'll edit, I'll, I'll edit this. Um, I want to say really quick, okay, so I, like, I saw you, like, start, you, okay, when you started playing with fire, there was, like, 500 dudes or something, and I I remember you were, like, who wants to be an admin? And, like, someone had, had like, added me to the group, and I was, like, yeah. I know what I'm doing. I could be an admin. And you were, <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> I can't remember how, what you said or whatever, but there was, like, hardly anyone in the group, and I was reading your post, and I was, like, holy shit, this is, like, super on point. Because I, I, I almost never read stuff that's super on point. I just made a video about how most of the advice in the community is wrong. I think you watched that one. Um, and I was like, this is really good shit. And so <clears throat> I hit you up in a private message. <laughs> do you want to, like, do you want to, like, recount that experience? <laughs> uh, yeah, private 
I mean, basically, John just like fucking barraged me with messages until I was like, all right, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, like fucking share content because I didn't know I didn't know who you were. All I knew was like um, that you had like a bad rep with RSD. So I was like, I had no idea who you were. So then I like I kind of uh, I like asked like some mutual friends we had in common, uh, like other guys in the community, and they were like, yeah, he's like everyone was like, yeah, he's solid. So then, like, then I was like, all right, yeah, like, let, let's see, like, let's, uh, so then I think what we did was we, uh, swapped, like, products or something like that, uh, or, like, you sent me some we of your content. Swapped, we, actually, we actually swapped semen, what we can call it. <laughs> yeah, I sent you, like, we a frozen semen sample in the mail, and then you sent me one. <laughs> I actually have semen frozen in San Diego, uh, in, like, some lab or whatever. All right, so from the vasectomy thing, um. Yeah, yeah, not, I mean, we're going to get into the, the good stuff here in a second, but yeah, so I basically, like, hit up Alex and was, like, berating him, like, teach me, teach, and this was, like, earlier this year, I was at, like, 700, like, but it, it's surprising, too, because I, I have other guys that are, like, at 200 or 300 that hit me up and ask me a shit of questions. Like, the top guys are, are at the top because they, like, find guys that are better than them, and they, like, pick their brains and, and dissect their, their brains. Like, I probably, I probably asked you more questions than anyone. And I'm at 700. And I was, that was when I was at 700. Oh, yeah. Karthik. <laughs> Dude, I guess, the, <laughs> I guess the people who are relentless. Well, I asked, uh, you, I asked you a lot of questions. And, no, I, the, the, and you, the difference, okay, here, I'll break it down very quickly. The difference, uh, you want to close the window? Or? Because I have the AC on. Oh, shit, sorry. My bad, bro. Um, the difference is that. Uh, the You're in Miami, guy, right? What? Yeah. You're I'm in Miami, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can kind of see, like, the. the I'm in city. Miami, bitch. I lived in Miami. I lived in Miami in twenty. I lived in Miami in twenty fifteen with a stripper. Huge mistake, which I just repeated in Portugal. You've, and, you've, um, you've, you've told me this story numerous times. But yeah, let me finish the point. So basically, the the people like a lot of people hit me up, but like the people who usually wind up getting like you know like who I wind up like like whatever like exchanging value with are the people who like offer something. So like you were like, yo, I got this product. Check this out. Check this out. Versus like the people who I just like wind up kind of ignoring are the people who just like just basically just keep asking nonstop questions without offering anything. That's like the big difference. Yeah. But would... you're, you're one of the only dudes and uh, I'm not just saying this cause we're doing a Facebook live. You're one of the only dudes like I can like still learn from, which is cool. Cause like it's, at this point, there's like almost no one that I can learn from. Ah, uh, you fly out of me, bro. Likewise. Likewise. All right. So let's, uh, right, let's, uh, let's, 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 yeah, let's, jump in let's jump. I feel like this is like, we're just like, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like wait, one other, one other thing. <laughs> Wait, one other quick note. So I came to visit. I had a boot camp in LA in, in March. Was it? No, no, no. Like April. And I, I like we. I fucked like five chicks at your house. And like, I brought. I pulled the stripper while you were asleep or some shit. Questions and shit. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah. There's there's I questions know. in my group too. All right. You want to do your questions first or mine? You start with yours. All right, hang on one second. All right, so I'm I'm gonna ignore like the ridiculous questions. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, like by the way, you're, for, for you're like for super. Guys. You're like you're like you're like super close to the camera. You're fa- right, that's better. I mean, just like prop it. Is, just prop your phone somewhere, so it's not like zoomed on your face. <clears throat> I have a date in like an hour with this like super, super, super hot chick. I'm on a, a nine for nine uh, streak. Yo, can you fucking I'm let me finish? Right? I damn questions, bro. <laughs> okay, go, go, go ahead. Uh, so, Praveen asked if we fight to the death match for 5K. Obviously, we're not going to fight for, to the death match for any amount of money. So, that's like a question I'm going to skip. Are you, are you guys going to host a joint free tour world summit as a competition RSD? No, because that's pretty gay. I mean, there's really – I don't really see, like, any, like, value doing that. Like, I mean, I, it, it might be cool if, like, me, you, Chris Wilde, uh, like, Jason James, like, eventually got together. But I don't know. I feel like all that can be done with, like, a Facebook Lives and, like, webinars and shit. Like, I don't really see the advantage of, like, actually doing it physically. That would be, like, my take on that. Uh, also, the problem is, like, like I lived in, in Vegas in 2013, and – uh I didn't, I've never been to an RST World Summit, but, like, I, I remember going to, like, XS, and there was, like, over 100 pickup dudes. And, like, literally, like, dudes, because I had my face out there at this point, and I was only at I, – I had just hit, like, 200 in, like, August 2013. 
and dudes were like going like this, like random dudes were seeing me and being like, I salute, like saluting me, <laughs> like shaking my hand, like taking selfies of me. It was like super fucking weird. Like I was like a Hollywood celebrity or something. And uh, there was like, there had to have been over a hundred pickup guys at XS and chicks. It was like a really weird dynamic. Like you'd open a chick and she'd be like, Oh my God, you're like the 10th man. <laughs> this is talk to me. And you're 10th straight. It's kind of like if you do day game in union square in New York city, Chicks are like, wow, this is like the fifth time today that a random stranger has talked to me. Um, <clears throat> point being, I was like pulling past these armies. I pulled 12, 12 for 12 days during Summit. I had a really good wing. It, uh, helped, it actually helped a lot. But I, my, my, but my game was tight. But these guys, like, it, it, it felt like such a real, like, it's like walking down a red carpet or something. These men are like high-fiving <laughs> as you're like doing the pull. All right, all right we, let's just get back to this. <laughs> but yeah, we're not going to do a fucking world summit. It's, it's stupid. All right, go ahead. So is the summary of that story is that, like, it was too much validation? It was like, ah, oh, fucking Dude, like, It was almost, like, better walking out of the club past the Chode Army than it was fucking the girl. Well, that's probably because I have, like, a, a massive, like, validation complex. <laughs> or I'm, like... I, I mean, I, I like almost. I probably, almost I'll enjoy writing. Props for admitting that. I, have, I would say I have like. A I almost like enjoy uh, writing writing the. I almost enjoy writing the field reports and watching the infield and watching everyone's reactions to the infield more than like banging the chick sometimes. But then, um, but then, you, then you get then you get like when you post out a video and then like people don't approve of the girl and then you get like the massive. Crash. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. To reiterate that that chick I just posted the fucking hour long talk with, I, who I banged all night and day, and I have lots of video proof of that. I think I'll post like a nude with like the nipples blurred or something. She has like a 10 body. Like everyone's like bitching about her face. Like she has like a flat stomach, perfect fake tits, like juicy ass. It's a fucking hot, hot ass chick. Yeah. She has a little bit of gaps in her teeth and like slightly <laughs> mannish face because she's Portuguese. I love her. People, are like, people love are like, do this again without a transvestite. I love the redemption on the what? last night. What? <laughs> I like how this Facebook Live is turning into like a redemption on the girl you banged last night. It's it's, it's stupid. Like th these guys try to like come at you over this stuff. Like I fuck really hot chicks all the time. Like I'm starting to post like each clothes on Instagram, <laughs> but it's like I have nothing to hide. Like I'm not I'm not like secretly banging lots of ugly chicks. And and these guys like that that video was very valuable too. Like she was like not not just <laughs> because of all the disses against Owen. You I know you haven't seen it yet. But because she was like, I can tell, she's like, I can tell you have lots of skills of women. And I, was, and I didn't tell her I'm a dating coach or any of this stuff. I'm like, how? She's like, by the way you speak, by the way you act. But this, she's basically talking about subcommunications. And I was like, that's fucking awesome to hear. Like, girls are like right on point. With, I did a, I did an interview about like dates and stuff and the girl, from a girl's perspective. It's in my product from the, with this 21 year old. And, and she's dated, like, she was my fuck buddy for like six months in Philadelphia. But she's dated like NFL players and like rich guys that have Lamborghinis and stuff. And all the stuff she said, all her advice, and I haven't shown her my dating system. It was it lined up perfect. And I, but I had to, like, induce d through induction, which is basically, like, taking a bunch of data and then extracting principles. That's how I figured out all this stuff. But she just spouted it all off. So I think that's, like, a really undervalued thing is, like, going to the source, going to the woman and being, like, because they, they have so much more social intuition than we do because of the way yeah, yeah, the I are I talk to that. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. That's how I get good at like evaluating pictures and figure out which were good Tinder pics, just by sending them to lots of girls. I did that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, like my clients, my clients send me a bunch of pictures, and they do it in your group too. And they're like, "Hey, what are the best pictures?" I'm like, "I don't fucking know. I'm not gay. Like, I can, I can <laughs> give you, like, I can give you like my like on the surface opinion. Like, oh, this might look better than this, but when it comes down to it, like, if you ask like five hot chicks, they're all gonna pick the same best one." Well, did you, did you read the thing I posted on your website? Did you read the guest post? Because that's like at the end of the guest post. Like I say, like once you get a bunch of pigs, the first thing you should do is just send them to a bunch of hot girls that you know. That's like the best way to find out which like pigs are going to be good. Well, that's what I tell guys too. But here's the problem: is they don't know hot girls. But no, that's bullshit though. Because everyone has uh, everyone has like hot girls they're friends with on Facebook. Girls love that shit. You can just PM girls on Facebook, like girls you're in high school with, and be like, "Hey, random question." Uh, which one of these picks do you think is the best? Girls love that shit. Like, dude, well, I was, lots, of, lots of these guys actually don't. Though. Like, like, I don't know. Do, do most of your clients have hot female friend, platonic friend? I, most of my clients don't. No, but like, everyone has like hot friends on Facebook. Like, everyone, like, they don't have to be like real fucking friends. Like, dude, when I started coaching, because I basically burned out all my booty calls 
by like having them evaluate me and like my first like five or 10 clients. Right. So they were like, all right, yeah. dude, like, cause I would like, I wouldn't hang out with them cause I was like busy with other shit and trying to fuck new girls. But I was constantly berating them to like evaluate like, yo, what do you think about this dude? And they're like, Jesus Christ. It's like the 10th fucking like guy you asked me to evaluate his Tinder profile pictures. They're like getting mad and annoyed. Right. So I started like hitting up like random girls I was friends with on Facebook. I was like, yo, what do you think about this guy? They're like, um, I haven't <laughs> talked to you since high school. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I know, but like, what do you think about this Tinder profile picture? And like, you'd be surprised. Like, you just like most people are just too afraid to ask. That's really what it comes down to, like just taking the initiative. Like, if you ask, you'd be surprised. Like, how girls are just down to help with that shit because they don't have anything better to do. They're fucking Facebook. Try to try to prop your phone. Some like I'm on my phone right now, but it's like propped against actually like a vibrator modulator (laughs) box. But try to. I I have like nothing to prop it. I'm like sitting in like a. The lighting is like pretty like weird and shit. Oh, man, a second, yeah. I think this is going to be, like, the best I'm going to get my phone. There's no way to, like, prop it somewhere? Uh, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, slightly, if you're, the, the shot is, like, slightly wavering constantly. It's, it's not that distracting, but if you can prop it. I don't think we do. Dude, this is going to distract, it's going to set this whole thing back by another 10 minutes while I fucking dig around. Right, right, right. Yeah, let's just, let's just jump into the questions, because people are probably, like, have their, have their dick in their hand waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get to my question. All right, so. Let's see. We got uh, two, two, two. Oh, most guys' profiles are successfully – okay. Okay, uh, Sergio asked, most Tinder profiles that are successful involve guys that have, A, great looks, physique shots, model pics, etc. Uh, good example is Terran Panda, or B, high status, frat pics, exclusive parties, pics with top-tier people. All right, then the question – obviously, both a good physique and a lifestyle take years to build. How can you create a good pro- – good profile when you don't have those things going for you yet, but you still want to use a Tinder as a pipeline. All right. So I'm going to, all right, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, bro. You can, you can, you can take it first. I'll I was going to say, I was going to give a, give a piece of advice I learned from you. First of all, you can do headless rip down shots. Yeah, absolutely. That's, is, that like a, is that like a deep secret that we're not supposed to say? No, you can say it. Like, I don't give a fuck. I mean, yeah, like, all right, so yeah, like, yeah, one, te- one, te- one technique if you're not willing to put in the work into the gym is to do a, a headless, making an anonymous body, uh, ripped ab shot, which is, that was, you told me about that, and I, I don't know how I didn't realize that, but that's, like, really fucking clever. It is. <laughs> here's, here's, all right, so I'm, I'm going to do a caveat with that. So most guys, as soon as, like, they hear that shit, they're like, oh, like, what if the girl finds out? Like, first of all, no girl gives a shit, like, once, once you already have your shit. <laughs> You're good. Unless you're, like, massive. Unless you're, like, you weigh 300 pounds, but you're doing, like, a perfect ribs abs. Like, as long as it's, like, more or less believable, that was you at one point. <laughs> no, like, so, second, in other words, this wouldn't work for, like, fat Luke, for RZ Luke. <laughs> <laughs> RZ Luke is watching this video. He's, like, finally. <laughs> big ass shot. That's the missing piece. No, but, like, the, se- the, se- the second caveat is that it can it, – it is effective, but it's not as effective as actually having, like, a – ripped and having like a because i've done i've done experiments with this so i had the fake abs pick and then like this summer i got pretty good like decent shape and then i got like a real keep going well why don't you fucking come back i mean (laughs) jesus christ i'm like talking oh there we go i was was kind of upset i I drank most of this when i was like really fucked up last night and there's only a little bit left but continue but yeah, so the caveat is that it's better if you can do, like, the real abs. And, like, it doesn't really, like, take that long. Like, it doesn't take years. It's, like, nonsense. I mean, unless you're, like, weigh 400 pounds, it's not going to take you years. You can you can look pretty decent in three to four months, especially if you're willing to take, like, SARMs or do, like, TRT. But even if you're not willing to do that, if you do, like, a keto diet and you train the right way and you do all that shit, like, three to four months, you should have – you should be able to take decent picks. None of this, like, one to Wait, two years. Yeah, well, if we're being real, though, like – Jesus, everyone keeps fucking blowing up. What? Can you still see? Yeah, I can hear you. Everyone, people are, like, blowing up my phone. Okay. <clears throat> what I've realized, though, is, like, everyone's lazy. Everyone's fucking not going to take any action about anything. Exactly. So advocating them going to the gym is, like, basically like a, a jerk-off. Like, I mean, I, I agree they should. But headless, let's let's give them, like, the easy fix. But headless ripped well, well, abs. Well, no, no, no. But here's the here's the thing. I've already, like it, it. Me and you have already talked about this extensively. Like ninety five percent of the guys, ninety percent of the guys in our groups are not going to see drastic results, no matter 
despite the fact that we give them like the right information, they might see some slight results. That's because they don't take enough action, right? They're going to be lazy. They're not going to go to the gym. Like I've been pretty clear about like, you know, like RSD says looks, looks, looks and shit doesn't matter. I've been pretty clear that like that's pure nonsense and that you should work on your looks and that it's not a bad give, thing. Give the, example, give the example of your one client that you said uh, you told them about getting the gym and then what happened with that? Wait, which one was you that? Were you, you were telling me recently you, you, you told the guy like your biggest problem is you need to get in the gym and then like six months later, like he's still. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, had, I had one client. Yeah, yeah, he was like he was like ultra skinny. And then um, <laughs> no offense. I mean, he's probably watching this. He's like motherfucker. But uh, yeah, so his, his biggest. But no, it's like it's like, a, you know, I'm telling the truth. So his biggest thing was that he looks like way too skinny. Like I'm pretty skinny, so I can't like fucking shit on, you know, people who are skinny. But he's like 120 pounds skinny. And I'm like, bro, like your biggest problem is you look way too skinny. No girl looks at you and thinks, yeah, this 120 pound hipster is going to fuck me just the right way. You know, like she looks at you and thinks like, oh, my, like this guy's going to like fucking get like a limp dick and like bust a nut in five seconds. Uh, so I'm like, bro, you need to go to the gym and you need to put on like, you know, like 20, 30 pounds of muscle mass or like mass in general. And like, I was like constantly riding him and he would like always like post shit. Like, yo, what do you think about this convo? She stopped responding. She unmatched me. Like, what could I have done better? You were constantly riding him? (laughs) And then finally, like, I think like a, like three weeks ago, he PM'd me. Like, he's like, Berating me with like, <laughs> fucking, like, like, yo, what do you think about this Tinder combo? I'm like, dude, have you been hitting the gym? He's like, I just got my weight protein yesterday. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, it's been like four months. Like, you just got your weight protein yesterday? Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, <laughs> you procrastinated oh. for like months. Yeah, no, yeah. And he's like, he's oh. like a nice guy too. Like, I want to see him get results, but like, he's not gonna get results until like, you know, he like fucking takes the action, like takes right action, not like stupid action. All right, but let- <laughs> Let's give that even even hearing that story, most people won't go to the gym. Let's unfortunately let's t- let's tell them the easy so headless headless uh, ripped abs picks pretending to be you just match the skin tone, uh, green screen plus Photoshop which I personally use, um, and I can show that I think I posted in your group those pictures. I have yeah, like, you- a picture of me DJing on the main stage of Tomorrowland, which is like the the biggest electronic music event in the world <laughs> in Belgium, and it's me staying in front of a green screen like. And then I have one where I'm in the like the, the Alps or something like like skiing. There's like 20 composite images. I'm really just like hung over in front of a green screen with a t-shirt. And then I have one where I'm like in London, which is in a green screen in San Diego. So like that, that cost me like 150 bucks, and I, I've gotten laid a shitload because <clears throat> I'm, I, I like to my my online pictures are like I still believe in like old school DHV stuff demonstration of our value stuff like mystery used to talk about in his book the mystery method his photo routine and he would he says there's attraction switches where like you're a leader of men a protector of loved ones adventurous life willingness to emote pre-selection i think is the other one and girls see these photos and they're like it, it makes them like really turn on and all this stuff so i have like me like djing like the biggest event in the world which is like maximum social proof I have, and I was a DJ, but this is a fake picture. I have me <laughs> like skiing in like this like crazy mountainous mountainous uh, environment, which is like maximum adventure. And yeah, I, have I, me, like, I actually I use uh, one of my picks. I'll, I'll give away a secret. One of my picks, you know, the pick of RSD Max, like snowboarding. I just use that fucking pick. It's like from him, like it's from the back, so you can't tell. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. So I just use RSD yeah, Max, yeah. Like snowboarding pick, or at least I did. I yeah, that's not, like, a, that's not a good point. Like, besides the. <laughs> We're, we're basically teaching, like, how to be, like, a fucking fraud, but How to be fine. a Catholic. Well, no, because, like, like, yeah, I keep saying, like, the caveat is, like, these are all, like, little shortcuts, but they're not going to get you as much results as if you actually do get the pics of yourself. Like, the, the yeah. like, did exclusive, like, very, like, very, like, fucking extensive testing on this. Like, the fake abs pic, and then, like, during the summer when I got up to, like, 160 pounds and, like, actually had a six-pack, and, like, a picture of me, like, playing tennis with a six-pack. I did like very extensive testing and like the results were like very conclusive. Like the one of me where it's actually me and you can see my face did like far better than the fake apps pick. So yeah, there's all these shortcuts, but like you might as well work towards yeah. the action. Like, yeah, like, so, yeah, so yeah, I guess like, it's, it's like bottom line is like you should be going to the gym and you should actually have a real six pack. Sorry. If not, you should use a shirt, <laughs> headless shirtless apps pick or go on Craigslist and hire someone to do. The, the key requirements are they have a green screen. I had a green screen in my house, so I didn't 
need them to have a green screen, good lighting, good camera, Photoshop experience, and they're going to basically put you into these grandiose <laughs> scenarios, which I've been using for years. It's, it's, paid, it's paid itself off in dividends. It's fucking awesome. These, these chicks, especially the chicks in the EDM, it's like locked. It's like done. She's like, is that Tomorrowland? Or like she, or she tells me on a date, like, oh, I'm really into EDM. Because I'm like, oh, I used to be a DJ. And I'm like, I, I DJ Tomorrowland. And they're like, no fucking way. I'm like, there it is. Or they're like, oh, I'm really into skiing. And I've never been skiing in my life. But I show them the skiing <laughs> picture. It's 24 images. I paid the dude 150 bucks for all these pictures. And they're like, holy fuck. Like, and it, you, I look like an action hero. <clears throat> It's it's like a hack, basically. It's like yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, my whole game is like Machiavellian tactics. I think I think you are more of a straight shooter, or you advocate straight shooting more. Uh, I'm all about like like hacking and scamming the system to like produce extra results. All right. Well, anyways, we is that, is that enough to be said about that topic? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. I mean, we covered it pretty extensively. Like we gave like the short the short answer and the long answer. So I think we kind of. We kind of yeah, yeah, but like be 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 great. Like, don't just fake being great. Like, be great. Like, go to the gym. Be a fucking good. Be do cool shit. Like, have pictures of you doing cool shit because you did cool shit. I totally agree with that. I mean, like, people should do cool shit. Like, I don't know. Like, don't be a pussy. Like, fucking travel. Like, see some shit. Uh, you know, travel to cool countries, fly to cool places. Like, everyone should travel. I don't know why everyone doesn't travel. Like, at least a bit. Like, even if you're working, I want to travel. I want to go travel Europe with you next summer. We're gonna. I'm going to be, we're, we're both planning to be big by then, but I'm, I'm going to be like, <laughs> hang probably from, because Sun, Sonny is going to train me um, really hard next, beginning of next year. I'm going to be, I'm already 6'4", I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm at 200 pounds, I'm going to probably get up to like 230, 240. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be out of control, I'm going to, like, I know how to fight really well, and I'm going to be really big, it's going to be awesome. I, I actually want to like, pick some fights with you by my side in Europe next summer. <laughs> I'll hand. I'll, I'll try to handle the whole thing, but it'll be. It'll be I don't know. I, I'm like crazy about like that. I don't know. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably. I like. Well, we can pick I, like I like. To, yeah, life, I like to look. Life is like girls. I'm not really down with like getting stabbed by a random Polish dude. Like I don't know. I'm like, I'm like a nihilist though. I'm like I want to like spice it up. <laughs> like I don't. I don't really give a fuck. Moving moving on to the next question. Uh, can you? So someone asked, question to John, how do you sustain yourself with cash while living your PUA fantasies? I mean, you've, you've, you've answered this extensively. You do internet marketing. Well, let me, let me explain how I got into internet marketing. So I, back in 2014, I had um, all, my, all my boot camps and coaching for the first two or three years was, was like largely word of mouth. It's like whoever seen the, movie, the famous Hollywood movie Hitch like where he's like, Oh, like people just find out about me through other clients and all this shit. That was how I was operating my business. And I was surviving like that. Like I, I was getting, cause my students were getting really, really good and they would tell their friends and I would get clients that way. And I was running this program in Vegas and I, and I wanted to add like more people to it. And I, I asked this one kid, I'm like, Can, do you know any other people? He's like, I know this rich internet marketer who was part of the Vegas immersion program. Thank God they fucking, stole my idea and ran away with that. Like this, this is what connected me to this internet marketing world. And he's, I can ask him and he asked him and the, and the dude was like really skeptical. And he's like, I don't really want to do it. And he was rich. He's actually Portuguese. That's why I'm at, that's why I'm in Portugal now, actually. Um, and this is three years ago, but long story short, I had to overcome like eight objections. He's like, I don't think, I don't know if you're the real deal. Show me reviews. I showed him reviews. He's like, these could be fake. I'm like, what are you talking about? And, and I realized like a lot of testimonials in the internet marketing world are, are just hired actors. Vast majority and, of them. Yeah. And like, literally there was like, it, like, it was like really close to not him not joining the program. And, and he finally joined the program for like half off or something, even though he was rich. And he had never had a same night lay before. And on the first night he got his, he got a same night lay. And he was like, dude, like, your system, and this is 2014, it's evolved and been optimized further. And he's like, dude, your system is like incredible. Like, this is amazing shit. Like, how are you marketing yourself? I'm like, word of mouth. And he's like, I'm an internet marketer. He was like a really successful rich internet marketer. And he's like, listen, here's what we need to do. Because he, he got laid other times in the program too. I think, I think he got laid two out of the three nights. And he had never gotten a stand that late before. 
And he's like, this is what we need to do. The, like the majority of the products in this niche in the dating niche are scams are, are made by internet marketers where they have solid copywriters. And for those of you that don't know, that means like sales copy. Like when you see like this long, long form, it's called long form sales letter. It's like trying to convince you to buy or like a video sales letter, which is trying to convince you to buy. And he's like, none of these guys have actual real skill that are dominating this niche. Let's get you a camera. Let's get you to make infield footage. He's like, lots of people care about that. It's like the best way to learn. I want you to just start recording like five nights a week. And I was like, okay. Like, and I, and I was like, excuse me. I was like naive and like a noob in terms of internet marketing. I'm like, okay, but can't, can't, if we make a product, can it beat all the, all their products? He's like, no, people are making the buying decision before they even see the content. He's like, all these people in the niche are farming their content out to India. This is, I'm not even just like spouting out my ass. This is like a very important thing to cover. And I'm like, no shit. Like, um, he's like, yeah, like, like Tawa Badass, for instance, it's a product that made millions of dollars in the pickup niche. And the, I met the guy that, that created the product and he's like, yeah, it's all bullshit. And, and I've met students that have, clients that have taken my, my boot camps and they're like, yeah, I used to study Tawa Badass. And I'm like, you know, that's a scam system. They're like, oh, it all, that makes sense now because they got like one layoff of it in like years. Anyways, <laughs> without, without, I go on tangents. The, the point is, is that He's like, make the infield footage. So, that, so that's why I, am, I amassed like mountains of infield footage because these scam systems, they can't do it. Like you can't like fake like mountains of infield. I mean, you could, I guess. But I, I was making shit happen on a, on a in, in 2014, it wasn't like a goal of mine, but this is a real true fact, statistic. I was pulling more times than the nights out, which means... On average, I was pulling at least once a night. There were some nights I pulled zero times, but I was pulling twice in a night more often than the zero. And that's a real statistic. And that was three years ago. I was at like 350 or something like that. And he's like, dude, you need to make this because you actually have the skill. You can... There's not any, I, don't, I shouldn't say any of this. There's not, there's not many guys that can do that. And so we capitalized on that. I made all this footage and all of our marketing angle now is like the infield footage. Um, and we're, we're re-releasing it all this year. Like the first time around it got shut down because of my negative articles. It's a whole nother fucking dumb story. But then he was like realizing that I'm really analytical and really smart and really like, guys like make fun of me for saying some of this, but I'm, I'm not taking credit for it. It's genetic as I said before. And he's like, why don't you do real, why don't we, why don't we have you do actual internet marketing that's non-pickup related as well? And so that's how, then he trained me and we, I partnered with some other guys that are top guys in the world at this and, and they trained me and I learned really quick and and uh that's that so that's that's how I got into, got into internet marketing basically just by getting a, a boot camp student that was a top guy so that was like a huge that would probably took way too long but I, I should try I'm always like going off on these long uh all right let's all right. Keep, keep moving. <laughs> all right so yeah that was a that was a pretty detailed explanation let's move on to the next question uh, what, is, what is your opinion on the John Deuce guy? Do you know? Do you know who this John Deuce guy is? No, I have no I idea that people are asking I've, directly. I've, I've, never, I've never, I've never heard of him. I don't have no idea. Yeah, I can't, I can't call him the Tommy because I've never heard of this dude. All right, so then next question: uh, frame control. Okay, so this is a detailed question. What? It's like a five part. It's like a six part question. What is a pre? Who's it from? Who's it from? It's by. Uh, Someone named uh, William or Villiam. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name. But it's William uh, who? Uh, Brosman. What? Uh, Pierce Brosman. So uh, it's uh, what is a pre prerequisite for for a strong frame? How to create a strong frame? How to maintain a strong frame? How to deal with douchey guys who are obviously trying to take you down? Interesting distinction between strong frame and being arrogant. How to dif differentiate? Um, whether somebody's giving you an honest feedback, which is painful but very helpful at the same time, or is just trying to act superior and basically trying to take you down. All right, so let me uh, – I'll crack into this. I mean, all these – pretty much I, all, all these six questions can be broken down to two questions, really, and it's like how to create and maintain a frame, and the second one is how to take feedback from people or how to decipher people who you should take feedback from. 
So the first one is on how to create and maintain a strong frame. I mean, that really comes from like, from like experience and like, from like nights out and shit. Like, for example, I have a pretty strong frame when it comes to game or when it comes to like doing like fucking like, I don't know, coaching and shit. But if you put me in like a, like a room with a bunch of multimillionaires and it's like talking about investing, something I know nothing about, and maybe I have like my little preconceived notions of investing, like my frame would break down pretty fast. If like fucking Warren Buffett was like, dude, like you don't know shit about investing. Like, let me tell you how it's done. I like shut the fuck up, you little fucking like 27 year old. Like, I'll tell you about fucking investing. Like, my frame would break down pretty fast. I'd be like, yeah, dude. Like, but I probably wouldn't even argue. I'd be like, okay, yeah, teach me what you know. Like, I'd be a little humble about it. So, frame really comes from experience. Like, you go out a lot and you have success with girls. And then, like, eventually, like, you get to a point where you've, like, more or less seen it all. Like, you know, hot, you're at a bar and a hot girl's like, you're too cocky. And you're like, you've been through this situation like a hundred times and like different variations of it. So you're like, you're like, you're like, yeah, f like, yeah, of course I'm fucking cocky. Like, you know, whatever. Like, oh no, I'm like a little fucking pussy. Like whatever. It doesn't matter what you say, but you still keep that same frame. Mm -hmm. I would say it just comes from experience, but it also comes from the second part of it. It comes from like not being a pussy and like not being a bitch. Like me and you talk about this a lot, but I think a big part is like a lot of guys are just like afraid. Like there's like kind of just comes from like generally being like a pussy is like having a weak frame is like you're afraid of like you know like some dude coming up and punching you and shit like you're kind of like very like just like afraid of shit happening so i would say like the best way to get around that is just desensitizing yourself taking risks like doing things that make you nervous and shit so you kind of like become less of a pussy over time i mean not to sound harsh i don't know what's your take on that one i see i see too many guys trying to fake a strong frame through outer game tactics. So that, that I think that's a very strong point to make. Is that I, I keep saying this on my videos, you can't fake being alpha, you can't fake being cool. It's not like I'm in a compromising situation. What is what is the outer game tactic of how I should behave to replicate an alpha male? There's being being hold, holding a strong frame and being an alpha guy is not about it's not about replicating an alpha man's actions or replicating an alpha man's frame because girls are going to see through that instantly. It's, it's transparent. Like I, I've had so many clients that are like trying to copy me and I'm not saying like I'm like the ultimate alpha male or anything, but I have a very strong frame and, and they think they can just copy in these situations. What would he do in this situation? Okay. I'll do it. You, it has to, it has to come from your inner being. Like you, you need like, here, this is like real shit. Like you guys, all that are, whoever's watching this, and I'm going to put this on my, on my YouTube channel. You need to become like a real man. You need to become a strong man. You need to have fucking principles. You need to have fucking hobbies and, and respect for yourself. And you can't, you can't fake this stuff. This, this isn't about outer game tactics to hold a frame. When a girl comes at you with disrespect, which is going to happen with almost every home girl you deal with, it's not a, a set of tactics to deal with it. It's, it's, She's violating you as a, as a as an alpha man, as a strong man, and that's the way you have to carry yourself with your friends, with your family. Like my like my not to get on a depressing rant, but my mother like massively, massively, massively <laughs> to the nth degree abused verbally abused me as a child, which is why I think I'm in this position in the first place. And it was horrible, and I, I, like, almost killed myself. I didn't ever try, but I was, like, on suicide watch in high school and all this stuff. Because like, she just constantly was, like, you're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing. You'll never be anything, you'll never be anything. And I think largely that the reason why I've, I've rose to this, like, prominence in, this, in the community is because when I fuck a girl, I'm, like, yeah, like, I'm someone, I'm someone now. And, like, everyone's, like, yeah, in the forums and all this stuff. I'm being honest. And I think, and, and I'm, I'm, and I was born genetically smart, so I was able to break this shit down. I have, I have this like deep, deep, deep rooted pain. Um, <laughs> now I sound like a crazy person. But bro, you just, you like, just ruined everyone's boners. Like all the dudes who were masturbating to this video. <laughs> but like, it, it was, it was like, it was like horrible. What was my original point? I'm trying to think. How to be, how to actually be a real alpha dude instead of faking it? Oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay 
so like when I, when I go home now and I, I haven't lived at home since I was 17, as soon as I was financially able to get out of the house, I got the fuck out of there because it's a fucking war zone in, the, in my home. It's horrible. My, my dad's like the nicest man ever. And my mom just like destroys him like constantly. It, it's, 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 it's so horrible. And when I'm home now, like, which is usually just for the holidays or something. And she, and she starts her typical shit up again. I'm like, you can't fucking talk to me like that. You know, it's not like it's not like aggressive or anything. There's there's like a line in the sand. I'm like, I don't need to depend on you financially anymore. You can't speak to me like that. You can't speak to dad like that. You you can't act like this. And she's totally she's she's like she's she's like beyond 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 like any hope of ever becoming a normal person. She's like the nicest person, but she's also like really miserable and really, and she really, I don't know. I'm not, this, this, it's not important for this video, but I, I tell her, I'm like, if you speak to me like this, if you speak to dad like this in front of me, I will leave the house. And, I, and I, it usually happens almost every time. I, and I get a hotel and I, I'm like, I can come back for the remainder of the holiday, but, but you can't act like this anymore. And these aren't outer game tactics. I am now a man that's like rose above this shit that doesn't tolerate this shit. I don't tolerate this shit from my mother. I don't tolerate this shit from my best friend. I don't tolerate this shit from my boss. I don't have a boss now. I run my own company, but when I had a boss, I didn't tolerate it from him. I don't tolerate this shit from my fuck buddies or from my girlfriends. You need to have this internal set of principles. And I have a video on my YouTube about having boundaries as a man. Frame is about being a real man. It's not about faking a bunch of fucking bullshit outer game tactics. If you are a real man, if you are a strong man, if you have principles, if you, if you have discipline, you stand up for them, you honor them. I think the best example really is, is a guy like Sonny Arvado, <laughs> even though he's <laughs> making these fucking maniac videos, which are hilarious. He, he's, and, and I just, me and Sonny are really close friends. We're like almost best friends and he's going to train me in the gym soon. Um, so, and he told me recently. Like sounds like it's getting pretty Huh? Sounds like it's getting pretty serious. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll digress in a second. Are you, are you guys he official? told me recently. Huh? Are you guys Facebook official best friends? <laughs> Not yet. He told me recently, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know this. He's like, bro, my mom destroyed me as a child. And I was like, no shit. Because I didn't know. Like, he, Like, he holds himself like – no one's ever been able to step on him ever. And he, he was like, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. He was like, I, I would cry and stuff like this. Or my mom would like destroy me. And, and, and now he's like this giant, like, to me, he's like the definition of like the ultimate alpha male. And he's like a bodybuilder and all this shit. But like his mom destroyed him. And, and he, I was like, damn, like, me too. I mean, I mean and, yeah, I'll, but, I'll, I'll add on this. I'll add on this. Like I'll throw in like a little practicality into it. Like, it comes from, yeah, I mean, like, how to become, like, a real, like, alpha dude instead of just faking it. I still think it comes from, like, having goals and then having boundaries. Like, I think, like, the average just the thing is, like, maybe not, like, in this group or, like, our groups, but, like, the average American, like, comes home, fucking gets berated by his fat girlfriend, like, fucking eats nachos and watches TV. Like, he has, like, no goals, no direction, no, like, fucking boundaries, can't step up for himself, gets, like, fucking bish around by his boss like dude i've seen this shit like i've worked in the corporate world i've seen people bish around by their boss and i'm like jesus fucking christ like have some respect for yourself that would never happen to me like when i was in the corporate world if like my boss tries to tell me shit i would like fucking stand up for myself like i don't give a shit like fire me don't fire me and i never did get fired because i stood up for myself like in a non-defensive not like non-fucking like weird confrontational way but so the point is is that like if you have goals you start developing boundaries because there's no way you can accomplish like your goals if you don't if you like fucking just constantly take shit from people so i think like it kind of starts from that and then i think a big one is also like i keep hammering on this is like fear like i think a lot of dudes are like afraid like they're afraid of uh getting rejected by the girl they're afraid of like i don't know being shit on you know, of all the shit so i think that if you can progressively desensitize yourself to the fear and become like i don't know like fearless to an extent then you have like a strong advantage like you can hold a strong frame then like if you're not afraid of the hot girl the ball then you can hold your frame. If you're like petrified, then nah, you probably won't be able to. I think that's like a big thing it comes down to. And the second part of the question is like how to take feedback. And I mean, like to me, it's like really obvious. Like, is the feedback coming from an egotistical place or is the person really trying to help you? Like, if I feel like the person 
trying to help me. I'll be humble and like I'll listen to what they say. Like it doesn't matter. I don't care yeah. if it's about or business or whatever. I'll always listen to like feedback and advice. <laughs> Like sometimes clients will PM me and be like, be like, bro, hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I have some feedback on your product. And yeah, like I never take it the wrong way. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like I want to hear it. Like, let's, let me listen. Like I always want to improve. So I think like a big part is just like not having an ego when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of like humbly taking feedback, I think like, um, I think me like men should be more appreciative of people being real with them. Like yeah. I, I have clients, I have clients on my program and I, I, on my boot camps, <clears throat> I don't really teach that much anymore, but when I was teaching a lot, I'd see them in set, and they're like, eh, eh, like just being a huge pussy, and I'm like, bro, you're being a huge fucking pussy, and they're like, oh, I'm paying you to tell me that? I'm like, yes, that's why you're paying me. I'm telling you, you're being a fucking pussy. And they're like, oh, I don't, I don't like you telling me that. I'm like, someone needs to tell you. Like, you want me to wrap this up in a big fucking sugar coat? I could teach you outer game tactics for days. I could teach you in and out like thousand percent strategies to pull. And these girls aren't going to like you because you're being a fucking pussy. And I, and I would tell these guys that to their face. I'll be like, look at me. You Today you're going to stop being a pussy. And a lot of times they do stop. Sometimes they don't. But guy, guys are too fucking sensitive. Like you, if you're a pussy, like for whoever's watching this, and, and some of you internally know <laughs> – Maybe you're in denial. Some of you know you're a fucking pussy. <laughs> you're in a, I'm a pussy denial. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I used to be. Like, and, so, and you can you can change that. Yeah, absolutely. If, 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 if you're watching this now and you're a pussy or like, or would you rather have someone fucking sugarcoat the whole thing and tell you like, hey, man, like, let me teach you all the tactics to go pull. And then you roll in and set and you're like, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like, all this weak shit, and the girls are like, you heard, for anyone that follows my stuff, you heard the girls say, like, she's like, I can tell you have tons of success with girls now. And I didn't tell her my late counts. I didn't, she doesn't know I'm dating anyone else. She can feel it. And with Tyler, she's like, complete opposite. You know, and it doesn't need to go on and on about Tyler, but they, they sense it. Like, you you can't just learn all these tactics if you're a pussy. You have to you have to break out of that. You have to stop being a pussy. And and guys are like, well, I don't like that. It's offensive. Okay, fuck you then. Like, don't don't play the game. Don't go go fucking jerk off to porn every night. What do you want? What do you want us to do? We're coaches. We can help you, but you need to become a fucking man. Like, mo oh, actually, this reminds me of something. Um, remember when you you gave me those like five points about why all the noobs suck? Do you want to say those? Those are important. <laughs> one of them is because they're a pussy. I remember yeah, that. One, That's why I thought of it. Yeah. yeah okay, wait. Yeah. So this is this is this is what this is you like making an assessment of, from your coaching. I agree with it. Um, same things I realized. Why do most guys suck? One. Yeah, so why, why do most guys suck? One being a pussy. Like that's a, that's the first okay. one. Like the fear. Just too, too wrapped up in fear. And, like, the, the point is not to say that I don't have fear or John doesn't have fear. I mean, I still, like, get nervous and shit. I still get approach anxiety to this day. But it's, like, kind of how you deal with fear. Like, when I get fear, like, the way you say it in your products, like, the analogy, it's, like, a perfect analogy. It's, like, the, the fucking pebble in the shoe. It's kind of like that. That's like, from mystery. Not, That's from mystery. I stole uh, that from mystery. Ah, uh, whatever. Fucking. Oh, yeah. Like, like, it's, it's, no, it's, really, to quick, quick touch on that, he says – you feel the approach anxiety, it never goes away, but you treat it like a pebble in your shoe, you just ignore it. He says that in the yeah. mystery method. Exactly, but it's kind of like, it doesn't have to be just like that with, uh, what's it called, with like just approaching girls. Like like that with like lifestyle and shit. Like I, I got tired of LA, so like I was like, you know what, I'm gonna fucking move. And like some of the people I was friends with, they're like, oh, dude, you've been in LA for five years, you're not going anywhere. I'm like, no, fucking got off my lease and just moved like moved across the country like i don't give a shit like if i want to do something i'm gonna do it that's like the big thing i find with me is like that if i say i'm gonna do something i might like deliver late but i will do it like when i said i was gonna write this tinder product people were like oh dude like you're just gonna go back to like working in sales i'm like no like i'm gonna finish this tinder product and i did i think that's like a big one is just like doing what you say and like kind of holding yourself accountable um, which a lot of people don't do. So first one, like, yeah, being a pussy, having no boundaries. Yeah. Uh, second the one, first one. Being second. a pussy. Second one is having well, incorrect good. information. Incorrect information, okay. Largely incorrect. propagated by OSD, largely propagated by 
I made a video about how everyone's learning from their peers that also fucking blow. That's another problem. Learn from the experts. Only learn from, only learn from the experts. Huh? Blind leading the blind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't. So, okay. So first off, don't be a pussy. Second of all, and we can make a whole other video about how not to be a pussy. Second of all, well, well I have a video. I'm, I'm like, like, like shouting at my you YouTube. Out, you want to seek out information from guys who are successful at something. So for example, yeah. like it's okay. So like nowadays, like pretty much everyone lies in the internet. Like, okay. So I can say that I bench 280 pounds and you know what? Like maybe some people will fucking believe that if I'm persuasive enough, but like, look at my fucking chest. I don't look like I bench 280 pounds. So I probably don't fucking bench 280 pounds. Like in reality, I bench like fucking 80 pounds because I have a shoulder injury. Like, you know, like it's, it's, you want to seek out information from people who are successful at something like, um, which is what I see a lot of people not doing. Like they take people's, I don't know, like maybe take people's word for it. Like, or someone, I don't know. I'm like, I have a pretty good bullshit filter so I can kind of tell if someone's like actually successful or something or like bullshitting it. I feel like most people don't have that, but yeah, seek out information from like the actual experts, like who other people, who you see subjectively, I, objectively get results. I mean, yeah, I made a video about how a lot of the community is the blind leading the blind. And I, I made another video about how to have boundaries as a man, which will take you largely out of being a pussy for standing up for yourself. And I, in the video I made with the woman last night, for those of you that haven't seen it, and by the way, this is J Mall Pickup YouTube. The video I made with the woman, she was like, when a man stands up for his boundaries, it's really hot. Like she's, she really, I didn't coach her on any of this. Right? She's like literally saying like, it's really hot. It's a big turn on. She literally says like, if the man doesn't stand up for himself, like I'm going to go cheat on him and like not, not be attracted to him anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Zero debate on that. Uh, okay. So that, don't be a pussy. Um, get, the correct get the correct information. Okay. Yeah. So learn from the experts like us. And then what's, what's the third, what's three, four, five. Uh, third one was don't be retarded. That was like a big one I see is like people doing retarded shit. Like they have the correct info, but they still do like retarded shit. I see this like all the time, all the time. With, like, <laughs> like, Wait, what, do you, what do you, like, what do you mean have, by that? Well, okay. Like people who have my Tinder product, like they know exactly like more or less what you should be doing in text messaging. Like, yeah, every situation is a little different, but you should be able to like, you know, get 70, 80%, like, you know, whatever, like, at, like optimally you should be able to text like pretty good like after you've gone through the product and i still see them making like fucking dumbass mistakes i'm like no offense to anyone but i still see people doing like retarded shit and then like you do retarded shit you're gonna get retarded results like that's just the end of the day like i see like people posting your group like by, your retard group, you, by retarded retarded you mean like going off going off of your off away from your program is that what you mean yeah, going off, like, just doing dumb, stupid shit. Like, you see this people in your group posting, like, some dude, I think I saw some guy posted, like, yo, I came up to this girl, and it's, like, the dumbest opener. I don't remember what the opener is, but something equivalent to, like, <laughs> like, would you fancy a dance with me, this gentleman, as I twirl you around or some, like, weird fucking creepy shit. And, like, and she didn't, and she didn't give me her phone number. Like, some, like, weird dumb shit. And it's, like, you know by now that this shit doesn't work. Like, John has written about it <laughs> Like, don't say weird, creepy shit when you open girls. And it's like the same thing with Tinder. I mean, I see people doing dumb shit all the time despite having correct info. So don't do do not do dumb shit. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to say it any plainer or blunter than that. Um, I'm not saying, like, don't express yourself and don't be who you are. But you can do all that without, like, doing retarded shit. I think part of that yeah, is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sent, you, sent, you sent me screenshots, some of these guys. Like, I mean, <laughs> one guy... <laughs> One guy, like, here's an example. I don't, I don't remember who it was, and we don't need to say his name, but one guy was like, uh, my dog told me to swipe right or something. <laughs> yeah, like, people, people, like, send me, like, this, like, the, the dumbest shit. Um, what's it called? I mean, I, I, I think part of the problem comes from, like, I, I do, like, not to keep ranting, but I do think part of the problem does come from, like, RSD because they have, like, these, like, stupid infield compilations of, like, really creepy, weird openers, so people think they need to be, like, fancy or gimmicky or, like, do weird shit that's just not necessary and superfluous i mean i don't know i think that's part of the problem in the pickup community but that's a whole other rant yeah all right wait, what, what's four what's number four and five what was four i sent you this like a week ago i'm trying to remember uh, number four was uh <laughs> oh not taking action i think that was it 
yeah, yeah. One of the one of them definitely is. Well, if it's not, it should be not taking action. Like people don't just be, like, yeah, don't be a fucking uh, keyboard jockey. Yeah, like people who have like they have all the info and they they know they can give advice perfectly, but they haven't like fucking approached a girl. In the yeah, let me let me let me shout out. Uh, one, let me shout out. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember. I'm actually, that. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna say his name because I don't, I don't like this kid, Matthew Bolton, from <laughs> Australia. Told me I don't I don't think I could learn anything from your advice or from your system because I know everything there is to know. I'm like really, because even even I don't feel that way. Like I, I feel yeah, like I, I have a lot to learn. I that way. Not not like a, oh like uh, like I, 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 I I've, I'm so humble that I feel like I know most of it, but there's, there's a bunch of areas I could improve. And yeah, even I feel like I should. Still be learning. Yeah, yeah, and I, I feel like even I should still be learning. That's what makes it all still fun I, and interesting. I would, I would and he, and he's, I, he's like. It was huh? something I didn't know. Well, this guy's like, I, I know everything there is to know. Like, I, you couldn't teach me anything new. I'm like, really? I'm like, what's what's your late count? Two. <laughs> two. That was like my past two days. My past two days, I had two. Like, dude, get the fuck out of here. And then, and then he's trying what, to like, what, dis what, me. What, like, what, what, what about the dude in your forum who was claiming, who's like, he's like, yeah, bro, I have super tight game, bro. Like, there's nothing, you, like, like, listen, dude, every girl I approach has a boyfriend. Like, you know, like, this statistically, I'm like, well, this is really happen to me. I just spoke about that on a recent YouTube video. Well, well it doesn't it's happen to me. It doesn't happen to John. He's like, no, no, no. I, like, I, did, I, did, eight, I did eight and eight days. I did eight and eight days. It's actually nine now with that, the, girl, the ugly girl from my... Facebook Live, who actually has a perfect body. I'm going to post a picture of her body with their nipples blurred out or something. Um, yeah, I just beat his leg count in nine days, like his lifetime leg count. And he still he still is adhering to the fact that his game is really tight. And he's like, oh, it must um, it must just be my city. It must just it must be my city. It must be the girls. Like, guy, guys are delusional. Like, that, your yeah, game I is not strong. Yeah. If you fuck date girl, and he, and he says out of a hundred approaches, he gets like two dates. So that's that's not correct statistics either. No, it's horrible. But we're 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 getting off topic. Let, let's keep let's keep going with the next question. Uh, the, well, I would say, uh, yeah. So the the because we we we're after like the five points. I would say the last point would be like, don't be delusional. Like a lot of guys are delusional. Like don't be like don't be delusional. Like if you if if you suck, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Just like you know, like yeah, you know, have more to learn. I would say that's like a big one. It's just like not being delusional. Um, not to go into like another RSD rant, but I remember I was telling you this that I think like Tyler has gone like pretty delusional. I've seen this like from when like I first met him like five years ago to kind of now. Like now he like he dresses weirder. He like fucking talks weirder. Like I think it's become delusional. <laughs> but, but, Did like, you see my vi Did you see my video talking about his scarves and, and his coat and shit? Yeah preposterous like i mean dude like he can like just wear normal outfits get a hair transplant like fucking like look like a normal decent human being and then not completely sketch girls out when he approaches them like fucking have to do like weird shit like again like another example of like someone who's delusional like his delusion is a little different it comes from like having like a fucking cult but uh you know like yeah don't be delusional like be in touch with reality that's why i always i back when i small rant back when i used to work in sales I used to fucking hate selling to old people. Like that was my least favorite customer. It was like people over the age of 60. And the reason I hated selling to old people is because I felt they were so disconnected with reality that it was really hard <laughs> to convince them of something because they're just so fucking out of touch with reality. I used to sell solar, solar panels. So it's like, it's something kind of new and they're just like so disconnected. They're like so used to getting electricity the traditional way. <laughs> just too disconnected with reality. So that's my uh, little quick rant on that. All right, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> Wait, as, a, as a side note, I make a fuckload of money off of old. It's almost all, it's almost all old women where I make all my money in marketing. It's like selling them skin creams and diet creams and shit. Well, because they buy that shit, dude, but they won't buy anything that's good for the environment because apparently, I don't know. <laughs> dude, I used to hate selling old people. Like my favorite customer was like some <laughs> mid thirties, mid forties. All right. <laughs> <laughs> dude it got to a point where i was like the one guy in the company who refused to like go on appointments with old people that was like my thing they were like okay if it's an old person don't give it to alex he's not gonna go what's the difference between so someone asks uh what's the difference between attraction and compliance and which concept is more useful to use uh all right i'll quickly touch on this i mean if you have if you have attraction you're gonna get a lot more compliance like a girl is gonna 
who's a girl going to comply with more? Like fucking Brad Pitt or like a homeless dude who's like hitting her up for cash. You know what I mean? Like you're going to get a lot more compliance if the girl's attracted to you. So they're kind of, they're not mutually exclusive, I would say. Um, I think you want both, but you might have some girls who are very attracted to you who are still not going to be compliant. Um, that would be kind of my take on that. You can kind of elaborate on this since these are kind of like your terms, like compliance and shit. Yeah, my, my whole game centers around uh, Mystery's old school model of compliance. Everything's a compliance test. I don't, I don't like to get into like my product for people that haven't bought it. But when you open, the girl's either going to be receptive or not. When you go for a makeout, the girl's going to be receptive or not. When you go for an isolation, the girl's going to be receptive or not. When you try to pull, the girl's going to be receptive or not. All these things are like junctures where you're putting her to a test and she's going to comply if things are on and if you're like gonna have a good probability of closing and she's gonna not comply if things are not on that simple so i don't i don't really think attraction and compliance are separate things it's more like if you're getting a bunch of compliance, there's attraction. If you're getting a bunch of non-compliance, there's not attraction. So, like, I think you could almost directly correlate levels of attraction qualitatively to levels of compliance quantitatively. Yeah. There's definitely a strong correlation there. I mean, some girls in general will be much more compliant naturally than other girls. Like, some girls are just, like, like to give more shit and, like, kind of, like, act up. I mean, like, I'm not going to get into a whole rant on, like, brats and how you should handle brats. But, like, yeah, like, you will see this. Like, some girls are generally more compliant than others. Like, for example, if a girl's out by herself, she'll be a lot more compliant than if she's with, like, five of her girlfriends. Just, like, just the fact, same girl, but different situation, different levels of compliance. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's – I think that's pretty much what needs to be said on that. All right, I think Karthik actually asked a good question here. I've seen your product where you, you're on dates with girls. You see them, pull them but don't make sexual moves until you take them home. How do you screen them? They may hook up once they're at your place, which is contradicting Alex's style, where he does all the work before pulling and the girls are asked. Can you guys share the topic and what's the optimal strategy? So he's talking, I think Karthik is misunderstanding what your style is. I don't think that you don't do anything when you're on the date. I've seen your infield pretty extensively and I've seen you out. You do definitely sexualize before you take the girl home. I mean, we've talked about this extensively. Like, you want to elaborate on kind of what your what your style is with that? Yeah, well, I mean, all all anyone can do, like, like, okay, I'll give a poker analogy. When you learn proper poker theory, you're going to make certain bets and certain moves, okay? And it's going to give you like an eighty percent chance or a ninety percent chance. And there's still going to be situations where someone incorrectly plays against you, and and they they hit it in that ten percent case. And you can be, I read a book called, um, what the fuck is the name? The top, the Tao of, I don't remember the fucking name, but basically it teaches you to like not be upset when someone hits that 10% situation. Cause in a hundred, a hundred times you do it, you're going to hit it 90, 90 times. So it was a, it was a proper move. It doesn't matter if it, if someone lucks out and hits, you know, like, like say you were a casino owner. And someone hit a jackpot and you're like, oh, fuck, like this is all rigged in our favor. And someone hit a jackpot in the long run, like you're cleaning up because everyone has the odds against them. So when you make proper moves in poker where you give yourself an 80 or 90 percent probability. It doesn't matter. Like I, I've been in so many poker poker games where the guys are like, let's just see how it would like say I, I make a, a strong bet and they, everyone folds or whatever. Like, let's just see how it, how it would have played out. It doesn't matter. Like in terms of mathematics. I had an 80% shot in that case. I had a 90% shot in that case. Maybe they would have hit their luck. Maybe they would have hit that 10%. It doesn't matter. Like, if they hit it, I shouldn't be like, oh, fuck, that was a poor move. So the way this applies to dates and, like, proper moves in game, you make the, the moves with the highest probability, and then the chips fall where they may. And it, it doesn't fucking matter. So, like, you sexualize things on a date, and, like, there's there's no one that's closing every every date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sexualize, you sexualize things. You you crank things up. You present yourself the best way you can. I I even had my first 
I used to always say that I've never had a girl from Tinder come straight to my place and not close. I had my first one in uh, in Prague. I had a girl, she was like a German tourist. She came to my place, like ultra fucking awkward and bounced within 20 minutes. She just did not bang. I had my very first one. So yeah, it happens. Like if you go through enough volume, like you will have like weird one-off situations that you will absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, my point was that like, um, you set things up as best as you can and there's going to be girls you bring home and they don't close. When you pull from clubs, there's going to be times where you don't close. That's how it is. They call it variance. It's, it happens in poker too. Like the, the, the millionaire poker players don't win every hand. They're not up every session. But in the long run, they crush it. So like you make the highest probability moves and then whatever happens, happens. So like you can't, you can't like force them to hook up or like guarantee it through game. You just give yourself a high probability. That's it. I mean, let's quickly elaborate on what high probability is. For me, the high probability is screening the girl when I initially meet her. So that's like if it's via Tinder or via cold approach, whatever the fuck. Like, there's no conversation I have where it's not at least hinting at sexuality, right? Like, I calibrate if the girl looks like if I approach a girl and she looks uncomfortable when I like make like sexual remarks, I'm not going to keep fucking making them, but I'm going to like kind of like. <laughs> broad at it and see how far I can go. So screening the girl where, wherever I initially meet her and then escalating pretty hard on the date. Um, like not too hard. The big thing me and you, I think, disagree on is I, I remember you were saying that you've recently discovered it's better to get like the long makeouts. I still avoid that generally on dates, but I escalate pretty hard in like every other way. Like I'll fuck it. No, no, that's not on dates. That's, that's night game before I oh, pull like in March. Oh, I see. Gotcha. In, March, in, in March in Manhattan, um, doing long makeouts at the club made me close almost every poll. I was pulling, I was pulling close to 100% of the time of the times I went out, and I was closing close to 100% of the time. There's like two exceptions. One of the times the girl had a boyfriend. One of the times the girl was like ultra prude and like it only fucked one dude. And I wasn't getting almost any objections because she's like really comfortable. She's making out with you. And the friends all fucked off because they saw you making out with her and they would come in to like check on her and all this bullshit. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm fine. And she sees like this girl's really into you. So for me, like, I think the best night game strategy now is talk, isolate to the bar, be one-on-one, -on -one, do a long makeout, pull 30 to 45 minutes in. Like I used to do five to 10 minute pulls and it's like a, it's like a coin flip because. Yeah, yeah, I agree um, with that. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah, because you don't know where you're at with the girl, and like, there's no comfort or anything, and like. Yeah, yeah. Then, then you might. The guys, start guys, like, the guys that are running flat, flash game, like guys that are playing five minutes running flash game, saying like, "Oh, we're gonna, you know, pulling under false pretenses, basically. So we're gonna go here and yeah. do this and that, and then we have party after party on shit, and the girl gets there and is like, where's the people in it? That's that shitty game as well." No, I agree. I mean, I've had I've had numerous like that. I used to do that game a lot more before I met you. I've had numerous five minute pulls, and those resulted sometimes with like two hours back in my house, like fucking rebuilding all the comfort. No, so, it's, like it's a coin. Yeah, it's a coin, it's a coin flip. Like in 2014, I was doing all these fast pulls, and it it was like a lot of them wouldn't close. Like they get back and they're like, "Where's all the people?" Or like they get back and the friends are like, "She can't go in the room with you," and you're like, "What the fuck?" Jesus Christ! I have like a million messages. Yeah, I'm not a big um, fan. of as polls either. I'm a fan of the, the exaggeration. I think the cue with the long makeouts at the clubs now is like, and lots of people disagree with me on this, but this is this is after 700 ladies. This was like a big adjustment. Um, the friends see that she's comfortable. The friends all trust you. And the girl doesn't give you objections. The only objection she gives you is that we can't fuck. And I would always preempt that, and I would always say, I want to go to my house and drink with you, where it's more quiet, where we can have more privacy. But this is not a sexual request. This is not a sexual expectation. And most of the time, they'd be like, oh, shit, you're a man. And I'd be like, when I, and I, this is like a canned story, but I'd be like, when I was younger, I wanted to fuck as fast as possible. As I've gotten older, I care more about if a woman is smart it's like old school mystery again. Like if a woman is smart, if a woman can cook and like all, all this bullshit. 
And they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, so let's just go and whatever happens, happens. And then like almost 100% of the time they bang. But you, but you take all the pressure off and you, and you right. solve the, AS, the NI slut defense problem. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say I'd say I'd say it's pretty similar. I'd say there's some the one big different thing about my game is I like I'll I, especially lately, like the past I'd say four or six months, I've been heavily getting into like escalating really hard at the venue and like figuring out like their kinks and shit. So that was like I had a oh I went out with like this uh, fake titted German girl who she like she didn't want to come straight to my place. She wanted me to like a bar. Wait, this, and this was the married I, the married one. The married one, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's not get into any more detail because I don't want to like fuck up her life or anything if this video goes viral. So yeah, we'll just like, marry marry German chick with fake big tits. So uh, meets me at the venue. By the way, fake tits are awesome. If you haven't experienced them, you guys should. <laughs> they definitely are. Uh, meets me at the venue, right? Like you know, Bill Comfort, everything's normal. Uh, you know, like I thought it was gonna be like she's like fairly compliant. Uh, get like a quick make out in. I'm like praying with her like legs and shit, like, rubbing her thighs running my hands down her back, like, fucking brushing up past her hair and all this shit. And, like, all right, it's pretty much on. And then I kind of get, like, a little lazy. I'm like, all right, let's finish our drinks, and then we'll go back to my place and we'll have another drink there. And she's like, uh, you know, maybe, like, she's like, maybe not tonight. She's like, you know what, like, I think we should, we just met. We should just both go our separate ways, and then we'll hang out, like, another time. I'm like, fuck, all right. I got to turn this shit fucking up. Like, I got a little lazy there. So then I'm, I'm like, I'm like, really? I'm like, you think you're going to get a second chance? She's like, what? Like, what do you mean? You won't go out with me again? I'm like, well, you really think I'm going to go out with a girl who fucking tries to make me wait? And then, like, I kind of say that with, like, a smirk so she's not, I'm not, like, butthurt or something like that. And then change topics and then, like, start escalating, like, really hard. Like, what are, what are her fucking kinks? I'm like, okay. So I start, like, trying different shit. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, so, like, what are, what, are, what are you fucking into? Like, are you into some, like, weird German dungeon porn? Like, you know, like, a little humor in there. And she's like, no, you know, I like blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? How do you feel about calling guys daddy? And then I quickly figured out that was her thing. Like, she loved, like, she's never had a guy who was comfortable being called daddy. I'm all about that shit. I'm like, yeah, you can fucking call me daddy. I'm like, say it. She's like, what? No, we're at a bar. I'm like, no, say it. She's like, say what? I'm like, say daddy. And, like, we literally, I would literally do this for five minutes with her until she's like, okay, daddy. And then pull was super fucking easy. And then I'm like, all right, let's go. Daddy wants to go. Like, it sounds like kind of creepy a little bit, like, as I'm telling the story now. But it worked. Like, pulled her back to my place, banged her zero LMR. So, like, that's my game now is, like, really, like, not, like, not making out too much, but, like, really, like, getting into the kinks of the girl and, like, really fucking, like, framing it sexually. Um, I had, like, a girl, uh, I think I told you, the girl I pulled uh, Night Gaming in Austin. I'll send you a pic of her. Uh, with her, I was, like, fucking pinning her up against the wall and shit, and, like, fucking, like, we're, like, making out. She, like, sent me, like, a text message, like, um, because we've been texting back and forth, and I'm, like, how, how's Austin been without me? She's, like, she's, like, well, I stopped going home with random guys to pin me up against the wall and tell me they're gonna fuck the shit out of me. Like, you know, like, shit like that. But, but then, like, the, there's, like, the compliance is high. Like, if you can just do that in a smooth way, though, like, without creeping the girl out, if you can tap into her, like, fucking kinks and shit, compliance is super high. You're not gonna get as much LMR, and you're gonna get the pull, like, no matter how logistics are. So that's kind of what I've been doing lately. It's been working pretty well for me. Uh, like, logi logistic, logistics, like, who gives a fuck, a flying fuck? Like, it, it matters if she can, if she can, uh, if she can, it's like, it's insane with social media and, and all this shit, all the, how many messages are coming into my phone. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm being constantly distracted here. Um, even when I'm trying to do work, it's like insane. Um, <laughs> I just spaced out. I don't even know. Whatever. <laughs> what? No, no, no. <laughs> what, was my, what was my point? Um, I'm not sure. What were we talking about? I don't know. The German girl with a fake tits. I don't know. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's do one last question. I think we both kind of like want to. You have a date later, right? What's the, what's the time now? I don't even, I can't see. Is, do you know the time that we've been going so far? Uh, I mean, it's like fucking three, it's like 3.30 Eastern time right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> like how long have we been, how long have we been uh, on the call? We've been on for like, I think like at least an hour. Okay. I don't, I, I can keep going, I don't care. I'm kind of drunk, but. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, let's do, let's do like a few more questions and then we'll like kind of like wrap it up. Um. So the question I see is how to be in the frame of the buyer, how to make the girls chase and invest into the conversation. 
I'll quickly comment on this. It's pretty straightforward. You're the buyer if you're the less needy one. So whoever needs the result less is usually the buyer, right? So yeah. if you have hot, hardcore abundance, if you got like five girls who are blowing you up trying to suck your dick, you're going to be the buyer. If you're, if you're like thirsty as fuck and you haven't been laid in like years, you're going to be the seller. I mean, that's really – on a subconscious level, that's really how it works. It's who needs the result less. I mean, I think it comes down to that, unless you have like anything to add on to that. If you haven't been laid in years, are there? Do you? Do you guys tell you that? Dude, there's <laughs> I can't four find dudes who haven't been laid in years. I go, I go. You and me both can relate. We text each other about this. Uh, going like three or four days, we're both like yeah, ready four, to kill four, so. four, four days is like it's like I'm like fuck. I haven't been laid in four days. Like shit, does my dick still even work? Like what's going on? Not sound like <laughs> not, not sound like cocky or anything. I mean, I think like part of that isn't. Like, but, okay. I will, I will add in something useful here. My my uncle, who's like um, he was like he's he's like the best thing I've I've met. It just happens to be my uncle. But I I met a lot of guys in the game and that that have whatever dated women and all this shit. He's he's the best I've met, and he told me this important lesson that in a man and, a man and woman interaction, one person is always kissing the other person's ass. And he says, you never want to be the one that's kissing her ass. Yeah, exactly. And, and he's, like, look at, he's like, look at all the girls you're dating now. Look at all the girls you've dated in the past. And you will notice there is one that's kissing the other one's ass. And I looked and I was like, oh, shit. That's completely true. So there's the advice. Don't, don't be the one kissing her ass. And, and, the, and the way you avoid that is, number one, having boundaries, not putting up with her shit. Number two, being high value. And also you have to really be willing to walk. Like I told a story in my boundaries video where he, where he like let a 10 go. Did you watch that boundaries video? No. You motherfucker. No, <laughs> um, he, he, I won't go into the whole story again, but basically like he was like washing, this isn't even made up. Like he was washing his motorcycle on this chick that he was dating on this perfect 10 and, and she fucked up and he cut her off. And this is before cell phones. And she came to his house and like was like, "Why aren't you answering my calls on shit?" And, I, and then he's like, "Cause you did this stupid bullshit." And then she tried to engage him in a logical argument, which they always win 100% of the time. So he didn't even engage in it. He's like, "No, you know what you did? You fucked up." And I don't. I'm not some punk that puts up a bullshit. That's like his line. I'm not some punk that puts up a bullshit. Differentiating himself from all the other fucking punks, men like low value men. And he said she walked off down his driveway and like. She had like this perfect ass, like hanging out of her skirt or jeans or, or, or fucking shorts, or whatever the fuck she had on. And he said like he almost broke. It was like a moment of weakness. He like looked at her and he's like, holy shit, like I'm letting a 10 leave my house. Like I could just apologize or I could just let it go and I could fucking maybe bang her and all this stuff. And he's like, but no, I held to my principle. And, it, and this is, it, it sounds like such a made up or dramatic story, but it, this is like, this is like the shit that I'm like, fuck. Like that's like true, true fucking player moment. Like he's letting a ten walk off. Why? Because she fucked up. Dude, I how have many to... men can do this? Like, no, and, and she came and she and she walked halfway down the fucking road and stopped and saw that he wasn't chasing her. And she came back and he fucked her on his motorcycle and he banged her for like two more months and got sick of her and, and just dropped her again. And, I, and like, I'm like, boom, like, <laughs> boom, like, that, that is some real shit. Like, you're not, you're not going to hear that from RSD or any of these fucking losers. That is some real shit. And, like, and he was, he was willing to let it go. Like, he saw this hot ass walking down the fuck. He was willing to let it go. And, and he's like, dude, I, I, they, they fuck up. And I, I, I will, like, go and jerk off in the bathroom when I'm at, I'm at their house. And I won't fuck up. They don't want to fuck. And I'll, I'll refuse to fuck them because they violated some shit with me. I'm like, dude, holy shit. Like, that's like hardcore. And, and this was a guy, he had long hair. This was in the 80s. He had long hair. He, he did kung fu. He, Wait, he who's was in a rock, rock band. Mm -hmm. This is he, your he did kung fu. He was in a, he was in a rock band. He, he fucking played metal and all this shit. And like, told me all these stories. Like, people fucked them. He fucking beat their ass. Like, all this crazy. Like, he's told me like a million crazy stories. And Son, uh, Sonny has like a uncle like this as well, who also has done all this crazy shit. But this is cool. It's like, I, I want to aspire. It's not like I want to be a, a maniac, like going around funny everyone. But like, you know, 
he he used to take his game was like he would bring like um like a battery powered radio to the beach with like these like mixed blue drinks and shit and like set it up on the beach and all these fucking bitches would come because he'd have like some music you know this is the 80s he had like some music no one had this and they would all come over and like he would like go bang him in his truck and all like all and he, he fucked all these dudes girlfriends and shit and like he tells me these stories and, and, and i have a million stories myself but like his stories put mine to shame and i'm like holy shit like this was like some next level shit but he's a natural like he he didn't have any like outer game tactics or a lot of my stuff that i came up with lines up perfectly with his but he this was all coming from his core like as they say like solid game is like replicating a true natural like I, but and then you become the natural not to be confused with max's fucking shitty product becoming the natural um all right anyways yeah i mean i think, <laughs> I, think I, I think that story pretty much sums it all up i had like the i'll tell a quick story and then we'll kind of wrap it up i had like a little bit of like a fucking uh I wouldn't call it an epiphany. It was like the, whatever the fuck the opposite of an epiphany is. I was at uh, Whole Foods. This was back in LA. And I see this guy, like no homo, but he's like a good looking fucking dude. He's like jacked. He's like six feet tall. And I see him with like this fucking fat chick, right? And the fat chick is like, just like, she's just disgusting. She's like a two, right? And then I like kind of overhear the conversation because they're talking kind of loud. And basically the fat chick, he like, su- he like, suggested they get a salad and the fat chick was saying I'm, I'm not even making this up she's like she's like she's like you're trying to body shame me right now don't body shame me and i'm like i'm like and he's like sorry babe like i'm sorry i was just i just thought we'd get a salad or something like that and she's like she's like no don't body shame me i'll eat what i want and i'm like listening to this and like i literally i almost like came into the conversation and just fucking like <laughs> dude pulled him aside I'm like bro what the fuck are you doing man like what the fuck is going on right now i'm like like you kidding me right now, dude? Like you're getting fucking disrespected by a two. Like, are you serious? Like, like this dude had like no boundaries. He needed the fat chick more than she needed him. It's like so preposterous to me. It's like so. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> <Wait. laughs> I literally, I was, I was. Wait, did she, did, she at least, did she at least have big tits? She, dude, I don't know. She was just like fucking gross. Like, I don't, I don't know if she had <laughs> fat tits hidden under her rolls or like whatever the fuck her deal was. Like, dude, dude. Wait, 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 I have, I have a, before I like, I, it was like when I was at like two lake count, me and my friend brought these two girls home and, <laughs> and he told me the next day that he thought he was feeling her up and he was like feeling her fat roll. <laughs> and he said, he said when he realized, he like started, <laughs> he started like dry heaving. Oh. <laughs> No, but like, it's one thing to, like, get drunk and bang a fat girl, but it's, like, one thing to, like, date a fat girl and then have her, like, fucking bitch around Whole Foods while every fucking other person watches. Like, What, what was the story? Was she, like, a sugar? What was the story there? Well, I don't know. Like, I didn't, like, fucking... Like, I didn't oh, interact. fuck. Hold on, hold on. I don't know if this, I don't know if this is going to pause my video. My, my date's, like, st- like, spamming my phone. Hold on, hold on one second. I don't... Keep talking, keep talking. Keep talking. I don't know if... You- I-